You've been searching for the best way to generate passive income in your life and heard that real estate is a great way to do it. But you're tired of all the so-called gurus who are all talk and no substance. Get ready to celebrate because Kevin Buck has spent 14 years successfully making it happen. This is the Real Estate Investing for Cash Flow podcast. Now, here's Kevin Buck. Hey guys, Kevin Bupp here with episode number 145 of the Real Estate Investing for Cash Flow podcast, where our mission is to help you build and maintain massive amounts of cash flow through income producing real estate investments. Man, do I have a special treat for you guys today. In today's episode, I'm going to be speaking with my longtime personal friend and mentor, Rod Cleave. I can tell you that this episode was way overdue, and it's been something that Rod and I have been talking about for probably more than a year now. And I can tell you this, whether you're just getting started as a real estate investor or are already a seasoned pro, I promise you that you'll find huge value in my discussion with Rod today. And I can tell you that I personally attribute a substantial portion of my overall success as a business owner and a real estate investor to Rod's personal involvement in my life. And so in today's show, we're going to somewhat steer clear from the actual mechanics of real estate investing like we normally focus on, and we're going to focus entirely on Rod's personal philosophy of goal setting, visualization, and manifesting success and how we can all apply these same principles in our very own life. And so I know you're going to love our time together. And guys, if this is the first time that you're tuning into our show here, I want to welcome you to our incredible family that we have here at the Real Estate Investing for Cashflow podcast. Or if you're one of the many thousands that tune in each and every week, I want to welcome you back and let you all know how grateful I am that you're here with me. I feel like I'm a very, very lucky person to have you guys all in my life here and listening to the show. And a few laundry list items that I want to run through here before we get on to the show with Rod. Um, first one is I want to remind you of the free 30-minute phone consultation that I offer. Been offering now for two, three years, something like that, a long time. Uh, basically, you can get on the phone with me, no ulterior motives whatsoever, and we could talk about anything and everything real estate investing, okay? If you, whether you're a beginner or a seasoned pro, anything in between, 30 minutes together, and it won't cost you a thing. I won't try to pitch any kind of coaching program or um, consulting or anything like that. If you want to schedule that, go to my website, kevinbupp.com. Scroll down three quarters of the way on the right-hand side, and there's a button that says Schedule Call with Kevin. It will take you to my calendar link. Click on a time and a date that works for you, and I'll look forward to chatting with you. Uh, second item here is uh, we have another podcast, a weekly podcast called the Mobile Home Park Investing Podcast, and it focuses on, guess what? 100% mobile home park investing. That is my asset of choice. I've owned hundreds of apartment units. I've owned hundreds of single family homes, some commercial real estate, and I have been focusing on mobile home parks for the past five years. And this is a show where we talk about everything and anything mobile home park investing, okay? And even if you don't have an interest in mobile home park investing, I can promise you that there are strategies and techniques that we talk about on that show that are applicable to just about any other type of real estate investing, okay? So I promise you that you'll get value out of it, uh, even if you don't have an interest in mobile home park investing. And if you don't know too much about the, the, the asset class of mobile home parks, then you should learn more because they are by far the most lucrative asset class that I've ever invested in. Again, I've owned a lot. I've been involved in more than $40 million as a principal of real estate transactions. And mobile home parks are hands down the most profitable of any that I've been involved in. A few other things I want to cover here real quick. Um, we just launched recently, about a month ago, our Mobile Home Park Investment Partnership Fund, okay? If you have any interest whatsoever in partnering with me and my team on future mo mobile home park deals, you can read more about our company and this opportunity to work together by visiting sunrisecapitalinvestors.com. That is our investment company website, sunrisecapitalinvestors.com. I would love, love, love the opportunity to show you why mobile home parks are one of the most lucrative niches in real estate and why they outperform just about every other type of real estate investment you've ever seen, okay? Please give me that opportunity because I think that you'll be blown away when you see the opportunity that exists in mobile home parks. Again, go to sunrisecapitalinvestors.com. We are looking for partners to invest with us in opportunities. We have multiple deals in contract right now, and we would love the opportunity to partner with you. And just an added bonus I want to mention here is that for those that invest with us through our partnership fund, 
we will give lifetime access to a training academy called the Mobile Home Park Academy, where we will teach you everything and anything related to mobile home park investing. Basically, all the mechanics of how to basically find, buy, and operate a successful mobile home park. And so maybe you're someone that wants to invest with us in a deal, but maybe one day you want to go out and do your own deal. Well, guess what? You'll have the opportunity to do so because you have the wisdom and knowledge to actually go out and find your own opportunities and run them successfully, okay? Again, to find out about that investment opportunity and to work with us, go to sunrisecapitalinvestors.com. And lastly, guys, if you happen to be in the Tampa Bay area, I'd love the opportunity to meet you, okay? I love meeting others who share the same passion as I do about real estate investing. So you can shoot me just a personal email or contact me through my website, kevin at kevinbupp.com. Dot com and we will try to coordinate a time to meet while you're in town, okay? So now let's get on to the part of the show that you've been waiting for, which is our interview with Rod Cleef. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, today on the show, we are thrilled to be joined by real estate expert, published author, fellow real estate podcaster, peak performance coach, and my great friend and mentor, Rod Cleef. And for those of you that don't know Rod, he's an absolutely brilliant entrepreneur who has owned more than 2,000 apartments and homes, has built many successful multi-million dollar businesses, and is obsessed with helping others, both as a mentor and through his charitable organization, the Tiny Hands Foundation. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome my great friend, Rod Cleef, to the show. Rod, how are you doing today? Hey, buddy. Awesome. I'm really looking forward to this. We're going to have some fun. This is long overdue, man. We, we've yeah, been talking about this right? for like, a, what, a year now? Close at to least, that. <laughs> at least. I, I mean, I have to thank you for getting me into podcasting because I wouldn't have done it without you, but... Uh, uh, no, it's 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 been way too long. We should have we should have uh, interviewed each other. Well, real quick before we get going, I really like just to share um, a little bit of information about uh, Rod Rod and I's history together. We, I've known Rod now for gosh, I think it's been fourteen or fifteen years. It's been a long time. Wow! And um, I know, I know, time flies, right? And I just really want to I want to share the important role that that Rod has played in my life um, and overall success as a as a business person and a real estate investor, a mobile home park investor, just everything that I am as a as a as a businessman and a real estate investor. Um, uh, I've, really, I've learned a ton from Rod. I mean, I've got, just to kind of give you an idea what that means, I've got three people on my speed dial that I consult with, like on a regular basis, where I, I need an opinion or I need some advice, um, and Rod is one of those three people. So anything that has to do with business or life in general, Rod's one of those three. He's on my speed dial. So Rod, I really appreciate everything you've done for me, my friend. Oh, that that made me feel really good, buddy. Thank you for that. Thank so you. let's let's talk about what we're going to be uh, diving into today's show. We're not necessarily going to be talking about real estate per se, although that I mean you've got a uh, very long background of real estate. You've owned thousands and thousands of units, but more so, we're going to take a a different angle and and we're going to speak more about. I guess the psychology behind your abundant success uh, as both a businessman and real estate investor and, and really talk to the listeners about uh, how you, how to take those same techniques and strategies that you utilize in your own life and apply them to their very own business. But um, before we dive into that, Rod, if, if you could, just for those that might not know of you or might not know your full history, maybe take a few minutes and just tell us a little bit more uh, about yourself. Sure, sure. And it all kind of ties together because, yes, I've had some some pretty uh, amazing success, but I've also had some equally spectacular failures. And and I call them seminars because they're always learning experiences. But I've had some big seminars and some very painful seminars. But I moved, I immigrated to this country when I was six years old. Um, didn't speak English. We, we ended up in Denver, Colorado. Um, and you know, I, I kind of learned my work ethic from my mom. Uh, we, we, we didn't have much money. I, I had to wear clothes from the Goodwill and, and you know, we ate uh, expired bread and drank powdered milk because that's all we could afford. Uh, we had love um, and we all worked hard. I mean, I got a paper route when I was young and my mom babysat kids and she's kind of my inspiration for real estate because when I was 14, she bought the house across the street for... I'm guessing I mean, just, these numbers are a little approximate, but pretty close, like 30, 32 to 34,000. And when I was about to graduate from high school, I was 17, three years later, the house was worth in the mid 50s. And although I flunked basic math, I was on the short bus for math, I was able to do that calculation. And and I was like, I'm getting into real estate. All she did was own this house and it went up $20,000. And so I got my real estate license uh, when I was 18, didn't make any money my first year much. I made like 10 grand, I think. In my second year, I maybe made 15 grand. But my third year, I made well over 100,000. 
Hmm. And the difference between year two and three was a combination of things. One, I was I was learning as fast as I could, so I, I raised my competence. By doing that, I also raised my confidence. And that's a critical thing to note here because if you if you're knowledgeable enough about the subject matter where you build your confidence it 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 impacts your ability to influence other people and so i ultimately ended up buying 500 houses in denver using other people's money and they'd put up the money i ultimately bought most of those people out but i ended up with 500 houses in denver a couple of hundred houses in memphis and 13 1400 houses in florida and multiple apartment buildings in each one of those states as well um and in 2006, my net worth went up $17 million. And I say that because there's a punchline. Uh, that was 2006. And I, I mean, I did the math on that. If you do the math, it's like $8,000 an hour on a 40-hour work week. And my head got real big, and I thought I could do no wrong. And then you know how when you get a big head, God or the universe has will slap you down to size? Well, that was 2008. And in 2008, I had a $50 million seminar. Uh, I lost, I imploded. Um, and what was interesting that I learned, it was very painful, obviously, because I thought I was set for life. I figured 80 million baby boomers getting old and getting cold, moving to Florida, we're going to make Florida recession proof. Well, <laughs> it actually, Florida and I think uh, uh, El Vegas and California were ground zero for what happened in 2008. But that said, um, the, 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 what was very interesting was I had houses, a lot of houses, uh, which I wouldn't wish on anybody, by the way, if you're interested in buying to hold, do not buy single family. I mean, I'm, uh, you know, that's all I talk about on my podcast is the lesson that I got between two, 2007 and 2009. If you're going to buy and hold, do multifamily. And I love what you talk about mobile home parks, I'm actively looking in, in, in I'm, in, I'm in that space as well, as you know, Kevin, um, my podcast is more about apartment buildings, but don't do single family for buy and hold. Because what was interesting was in 2008, my single family couldn't make it, but my multifamily did just fine. Sure, we it contracted and we had less revenue, but but it, it would have survived 2008. Now, unfortunately, I was cross collateralized with my single family portfolio. So I, I literally lost it all. Um, but I think the message that I wanted uh, when we talked about what we could what I could talk about on your show today, Kevin, the message I want to communicate to your listeners is, you know, a lot of people are debilitated when they hit setbacks. And and in this business, the, the, the business of mobile home park investing or apartment investing or whatever you get into any business, 80% of your success in that business is your psychology. Only 20% is what we talk about on, our, uh, on the show here, Kevin, is, is the real estate component. 80% is your mindset, your psychology, your ability to, you know, when, that, when those walls fall down in front of you and, and, and block you, your ability to go around them or over them or through them. And that's based on your mindset. So, you know, yeah, I, I, it was pretty painful to lose it all. Uh, but, but out of that, because I had the right mindset, and luckily I, I got to spend 16 years following Tony Robbins around, which obviously had a huge impact on all this. But the, I, I learned when I look back on what happened um, that I was actually goal setting and visualizing before I even knew what that was. You know, now with the with the with the book and the movie, The Secret and the Law of Attraction and all that, um, you know, it's it's much more well known uh, that dynamic and and attracting what you want into your life. But I was doing it when I was young, and if you'd like, I sh I can share some examples. Yeah, I'd love that. Okay, so so when I when I got my real estate broker's license, you know, I I I was going to be a broker. So I I got the four door Granada because I heard you had to have a four door <laughs> or had to have a four door car so you could show people houses. This is the ugliest damn thing you ever saw in your life, and you know, and I got the bus bench down on the end of the street with my picture on it, which didn't get me any business. I didn't know what I was doing. It made my mom it made my mom proud. That was about yeah. it. But but the four door Granada. So my, I, I worked with a broker that had a Corvette, and he let me drive it, and I just thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. So I got a picture out of a magazine. This is way before the internet. I got a picture out of a magazine of a Corvette, and I put it on the visor of my four-door Granada. Within a year or two, I had a Corvette, a, a beautiful burgundy Corvette. Then 
this is back uh, when the show Magnum P.I. was on, and there was Tom Selleck was the actor, and there was a car he drove. It was a Ferrari 308, and I just thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. So I got a picture. And by the way, guys, I want to preface this by saying – I'm going to give you examples in my own life, and this is not me bragging. I just have – these are the only examples I can use. In fact, the, the things that I'm going to talk about here, they don't even motivate me anymore, but but they're great examples, great illustrative examples. So I had the Corvette, and I got a picture of that Ferrari, and I put that on the visor of my Corvette. And a couple years later, I bought a Maserati that, frankly, you couldn't tell them – they looked just like the Ferrari. And the last example I'm going to give you, another car example, is I've always wanted a Lamborghini. And I'm the guy that in his bedroom, I'm sure you've seen him, had the posters of the Lamborghinis with the girls in the bikinis. And, <laughs> and you know, that that's me. I'm that guy. And and I'm, I know I wasn't alone in that, and I'm, but I'm, a, I'm man enough to admit it. Anyway, I had the pictures. <laughs> I, had, I had the pictures of Lamborghini. But what was interesting is my son, uh, he collected car models. And he had probably 20 or 30 of these exotic car models. He had a model of the exact same color and style of the Lamborghini that I ended up getting, which I ultimately wrecked, but that's another story. <laughs> but 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 anyway, so so my point is visualization works. Now, what I'd like to do, if you'll humor me, Kevin, is I want to talk a little bit about what I do setting up goals. If if you'll Absolutely. humor me, I'll do. Okay, yep. so you know my my coaching students and uh, I go I take them through this this goal setting workshop and i'm going to i'm going to kind of give it to you high level but real fast but you know if you can take some notes take some notes but this is very very powerful and and guys most people spend more time planning christmas than they do orchestrating and planning their lives okay so if you if you don't have written goals you are making a huge mistake because there's something called the reticular activating system. And what that is, is it's the filter in your brain that filters out all the thousands of things that are going on around you. And for example, let me give you an example of it. Let's say you bought a car and you re never really noticed that car, but when you bought it, you see them everywhere. Well, that's your reticular activating system. What it does is it points you to things that it thinks your brain is going to be interested in, things that you are interested in. And the physical act of writing your goals down is incredibly powerful because it triggers your reticular activating system. Mm -hmm. So, but, so, but anyway, so what I recommend you do is as you do this this workshop you do it yourself you do it in a high energy space you're in a you're in a, a lot of you, you make sure you're hydrated you make sure you got a lot of high energy don't do it late at night do it when you're at high energy and you sit down and you write down everything you could ever possibly want okay and i mean everything i mean you know, if you want houses in multiple places, if you want the jet, the yacht, all the big things, the private island, I don't, you know, think as big as you want. Pretend it's Christmas and you can have anything you want. So you write down everything you could possibly ever want, the jet skis, the boats, the cars, but not don't just stop there. Who would you want to help? You know, I bought a house for my mom and dad. I took them on a cruise a couple of years. You know, think about who you want to help. Write down everything you could ever possibly want to do. Learn. You know, maybe you want to learn another language. Maybe you want to learn how to fly helicopters. It, whatever it is, write down everything you could ever possibly want. And don't take the pen off the paper when you do this. Write down every possible thing. And then once you're done, take and write down a 1, a 3, a 5, or a 10 by each goal for the number of years that it's going to take you to accomplish that goal. And remember, people will overestimate what they can do in a year and grossly underestimate what they can do in a decade. So remember that. And but but write a one, three, five, seven, or ten, you know, uh, and maybe even twenty if it's a really long term goal. But but write a number by each goal. Okay. So you've written all your goals, you've written a number by the goals. Now I want you to pick your top four one year goals. Okay. And and so circle your top four one year goals and write those on a separate sheet of paper. And now, there's two steps to this process as most people don't take that are the most important steps, okay? You have to write down, I don't mean think, just think. I mean write down why those goals are an absolute must, why you have to achieve them within a year. Write down and use emotionally charged language like, you know, I'll feel like a massive success because I'll feel incredible because I'll have, I'll have you know, made my – 
I'll have succeeded for my family or I'll I'll have um, you know just just write why they're an absolute must in 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 strong powerful language but then take it one step further because most people will do more to avoid pain than gain pleasure I want you to write a couple of negative reasons if you don't succeed what that's going to mean and and be hard on yourself like I'll feel like a failure with my I'll feel like I let my family down or you know and I know that sounds harsh but it's very powerful so so take the time to to write positive and negative reasons why you are going to get those four goals this year, okay? So, now you've got your goals, you've got your reasons why, compelling, because people, you know, it's the why that drives you. It's not the actual goal, it's why it's important. If you can keep that in the forefront of your mind, when you hit those stumbling blocks, you'll remember why you're doing what you're doing, why you're getting up early, why you're staying up late, why you're out on a Saturday looking at mobile home parks or apartments or whatever you're doing. You'll, you'll remember why you're doing it because it's the why that drives you. But the last thing I want you to do, and don't skip this step, I want you to go on Google and find pictures for each one of those four goals that juice you, that when you see the picture, it kind of, it, 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 it motivates you, it stirs you towards each one of those goals. So find pictures of those goals, just go on Google, download a bunch of them, and then I recommend you go to CVS or Walgreens and have them blown up into 8 by 10 or bigger and put them where you're going to see them every day because that is incredibly powerful. I'll give you, I'll, I'll tell you how it's worked for me. I mean, I, I told you the pictures about the cars and stuff. But I have, I have, I'm looking at it here. If you could see my planner, I have, I'm a dinosaur and I still have one of these old Franklin Covey planners. It used to be a day timer and then they think they got bat, bought by Franklin Covey. But anyway, so in the back of this planner, I have pictures that are, you know, encased in plastic that have been in here for almost 20 years. Okay. And my first few pictures are some gratitude pictures. I recommend you have some pictures for gratitude because everything guys comes from a place of gratitude. Okay. So make sure you have that. But then I've got the cars, the houses, the boats. What's astounding is I've, a, I've gotten three fourths of the things that are in this, in these pictures. And I, I keep them just as a reminder of the power of this. So don't underestimate. And some of you I know are sitting and going, oh, this is foofy. This is, you know, mumbo jumbo. I'm, I promise you this works. Okay. I, I'm just telling you, I'm not the only example of this. There are numerous other examples of, of the power of visualization. I'll give you one, another, a couple of quick ones. One, uh, um, when uh, Walt Disney, I'm sorry, when Roy Disney opened up Epcot Center, okay, Walt had already died, okay, and they opened up Epcot Center, and a reporter came up to Roy Disney and said, it's a shame Walt didn't get to see this. And Roy looked at him funny and said, the only reason you're seeing this today is because Walt saw this in his mind. Mm -hmm. So guys, have pictures of your goals. And then uh, I'll tell you one other thing. If you humor me, I'll give you a five-minute um, thing that I do in the mornings that, that really helps with this. If yes, that's okay, please, Kevin. Please oh, do. Okay. Please do. Okay. So I recommend that you have a morning ritual, okay, that every morning, and it takes five minutes, guys, literally five, ten minutes. Some people meditate. Some people pray. You know, this can be a version of that. But I recommend that you – just close your eyes. You can do it while laying in bed. You can do it while sitting in a chair. Just close your eyes for a minute. Take a couple of deep breaths and just be grateful for the things that you have in your life. I think about my wife. I think about my kids. I think about my friends, my Ke Kevin Bupp. And, I, <laughs> and, I, and I'm, grateful for the, I'm grateful for whatever I can think of to be grateful for. Then what I do, which is very, very powerful, is I – I am grateful for the things, those four year, four one year goals. I'm grateful for those goals as if I already have them. Even with emotion sometimes. If you incorporate emotion into that gratitude, it is incredibly powerful. And I know I've lost a few of you now, but I'm I promise you this stuff works, guys. So if if you if you'll visualize these goals as if you already have them, it's incredibly powerful. And I, I, and so, and it takes, and, and then the last thing I do is I just make a declaration to myself that's going to be an awesome day. And that's a five to 10 minute max process. You can certainly take longer, but in five to 10 minutes, you set yourself off. You've triggered your reticular activating system. You've reminded yourself of your goals and, and you're ready to go kick ass. Now, I want to do, I want to give you one caveat. Um, and it's another example. And again, it's not to try to impress you. It's just to give you an example in my own life. I forever, I wanted a house on the beach. I lived in Denver and we don't, there's no beach in Denver and I always wanted to live on the beach. And I ultimately built this, 
a massive 10,000 square foot, uh, $8 million house down on a key here in Sarasota. And, and again, not to brag, just to give it as an example. In fact, this, you know, so I'm, 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 I'm in the pool at this home after I built it shortly after, like within, within a couple of weeks of building it, I'm in this pool floating up, looking at this big Testament to my ego and I'm depressed. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? I just I just accomplished this massive goal in my life. This house is magnificent, and and I'm depressed. And I'm really depressed. This is like I think back in uh, 2000, I think, and 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 I didn't know it at the time, but looking back on it, there were two things happening. And and the reason, since we're talking about goals, I want to share this one with you. One of them is you never achieve a big goal without having other goals lined up. Like the good book says, without a vision, the people perish. If you don't have a vision for the future, it's very depressing. In fact, most suicidal people have lost their vision for the future. They don't see a compelling vision. So I, I know that's a horrible example, but but you have to have a you have to have a compelling vision for the future. So if you're gonna achieve a big goal, make sure you have other goals lined up. But the second thing that was happening that I want to share because of your huge heart, Kevin, and I don't know if you've ever talked about what you do on your podcast, but I'm definitely going to talk about it. But <laughs> but but I what I realized at the time when I look back on it now was I was unfulfilled. There's a big difference, my friends, those of you listening, between success and fulfillment. I know some of you guys listening are like hungry. You got blood dripping from your teeth, and you're going to go out there and kick ass and 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 buy property and build the life that that you deserve, the successful life, and you're going to do everything to to kick butt in this business. Don't lose sight of what I just said. There's a big difference between success and fulfillment. I know guys that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars, billionaires even, that are very successful, but they're unhappy. There's a, like Tony Robbins says, the science of achievement versus the art of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Fulfillment is an art. And so back then, I was unhappy. And that year, I decided for Thanksgiving to feed five families for the holidays. My brother and I, we went and bought food, and we delivered baskets of food to five families. The third family changed my life. I walked up to this house. I'm, I, I know I'm rambling here, Kevin. I hope it's okay. No, if I, no, share I love this. it. I love it. Okay. Please share. All right. All right. So I'm. I'm. I, the third family. I we. I delivered this box of food and a turkey, a frozen turkey, and and this lady comes out, and this was this horrible house, a uh, row house, uh, one of these houses where you walk through the living room, through the bedroom to the kitchen and the bathroom was off the kitchen. One of those, I mean, it's just, you know, old. But anyway, she walks out of the house. She starts crying when she sees the food. Her five children come out. They all start crying when they see the food. And then I start crying and, and you know, it's a, a, I was hooked. The next year I fed 50 families and I doubled it every year. We have now fed 50,000 children for the holidays. Um, and we have given away thousands of backpacks filled with school supplies to school children that that don't have the basic necessities for school, which just makes me crazy. But I won't go off. I won't go off on that tangent. But then then uh, we've given away thousands of teddy bears to the local police departments for their officers to keep in their cars and give to children that they exper- that, that have experienced a traumatic event to bridge the gap between that officer and the child. And it's been my greatest joy. So, guys, those of you listening, and I don't want you to think you have to do something as massive as, as all that. This is just given, you know, it's been great for me, but I don't care if you just pay for the person in line behind you coffee uh, at Starbucks, or you just decide to smile at everybody today. You just give back in some fashion because it will add a richness to your life that is more important than the success. And, and frankly, it will enhance your success because it comes back tenfold. I know that sounds cliche and you've heard it before, and I promise you it's the truth. Whatever you give, you get back tenfold, be it money, be it time, be it love. And so yeah. That's my point. It's, there's a big difference between success and fulfillment. Go no, please. and I want to I want to talk about you know that coming back to you tenfold. But I also I want to I want to expand on. Um, you made the point there about you know fulfillment, and you don't have to do anything as big as what you just mentioned, Rod. Like feeding fifty thousand right. people. Like you just got to start right. somewhere. Even if it's feeding one family or doing just Thank one you. small thing of, of gratitude or you know for, you know helping someone else, helping another person in their life, whatever that means. And so you know se- seven years ago, it's been seven years now. I did confirm the date, Rod, about our bike ride. 
side. But I, you know, I, yeah, I, I am. Um, no, please let me tell it. Let me tell it. Let me tell it. Because I want to give you credit for it. Well, my I, I know you can you can tell a story, but I was looking for a way to to give okay. back, and so I, I piggybacked on your already existing efforts, and so that that was going to be part of my story. Is that guys, I, uh, you guys that are ahead, listening, go ahead, go I'm ahead. sorry, I'm taking because I'm, I'm, because it's going to be more powerful coming from me. Those of you listening, I need you to know this guy that you listen to has the biggest heart on the friggin' planet. Okay, he has through his efforts that I'll let him tell you about the efforts, but through that he's raised. I had probably close to $100,000 for my foundation through his through this this ride that he does to to Key West and I just want to thank you publicly Kevin for that because you know you're one of the few people and and I, I will say this as well guys those of you that you go through life and you meet people that have total integrity and I've I've only met two or three in my lifetime okay and Kevin you're one of them and I say that I sincerely. I appreciate that, Rod. No, and <laughs> I feel I mean the same way. Sincerely. Mutual feeling, I, my friend. No, no. I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm then, you know, uh, I, I mean this sincerely, total integrity. So any of you that have thought about doing business with Kevin, you are in good hands if you're going to. And I, I, I say that with, with complete uh, uh, conviction. And so, but, but anyway, thank you publicly, thank you. publicly that, for what you've done for the Tiny Hands Foundation through your bike ride. Now, describe the bike ride. Yeah, so, I mean, so, so the reason behind it is I, I was looking for a way to, to give back and, and play a bigger role in helping others. And I know that Rod had this, uh, this foundation. I had been involved in, in just volunteering, you know, during the basket brigades and such for a number of years. And I'm a big cyclist. For those of you who don't know, if you've been listening to the podcast for a long time, you probably hear about some of my crazy adventures I take and I go ride hundreds of miles here and there and everywhere. And, uh, um, you know that's one of my passions. I really enjoy it. It's just it's one of my ways to get away. It's 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 one of the things I'm just grateful for. I'm grateful for my health and I'm grateful for the ability to get out and ride and explore and see new places. And uh, I wanted to figure out a way to pair that passion with the ability to give back. And that's that's how this this ride was born. And um, you know I remember actually I remember the day I came to, came came met with you, Rod. I said, hey, I want to put that together this bike ride. We're going to ride from Fort Myers Beach to Key West, and whatever money we raise, I'm going to give it to Tiny Hands. You're like, you're an idiot. I can't. No, you didn't call me an idiot. You yeah, said you're crazy. No, 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 280 miles. What are you ride. doing? Yeah, that's, that's a hell of a bike ride. Three full days. Are you sure you can and, make it? <laughs> right. And and of course I, I I have to be honest. I didn't think you were going to raise much money with it. I mean I'm just candid at that time. Actually, I don't think now, we did. Now, two two years we didn't raise much, but now it's actually now now we're we've got our our stride. We hit our stride. Right, and uh, yeah, we got. It was like twenty five grand last year, and you've done it for seven years. I mean, you've been a yeah. godsend to my foundation. And 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 guys, if you follow your passion, and and you incorporate giving back into something like Kevin did into 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 you know your passion into giving back, look at what's possible. And it's just it's extraordinary. And I, I just. You know, I, so I yeah. Wanna, so figure out what you, you enjoy and pair it together, right? I mean, that's 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 right. really the moral of that story there. Like, I I, I you know I, I took what I love to do and I you know I enjoy doing it. And so like for me, like I'll never stop doing this ride unless my legs and my arms fall off, Rod, and I can't sit on a bike anymore, which might happen at some point in the future. Well, <laughs> yeah. uh, I can, th- this ride will carry on. And it will continue to to thrive and it'll continue um, you know helping those that that are you know basically helped through the Tiny Hands Foundation. So and oh, it's, it's I enjoy incredible. doing it and um, so. It's you don't have to go do something, you know, as big as like the tiny hands foundation. Cause that, that's a, I know you start with one basket, Rob, but it's a massive, massive uh, endeavor that you take on each and every year. I mean, multiple times a year now, because you guys don't just do the Bass Brigade. You do the, the backpack brigades and the, the, the teddy bear drive. And, and it's just amazing what you put together. You built such a large organization that's helped so many thousands of people. It's just it's well, so buddy, impressive buddy, watching. We couldn't do it, we couldn't that, do it without you. Yeah. And, and, but, but, you know, the, to, to, to give your listeners you know, uh, something to think about, you know, let's say that you, 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 maybe you guys are doing single family homes. Maybe you've started there and now you want to get into mobile home parks. Maybe you've done your first mobile home park. Take somebody under your wing, there you go, go to your local yep. RIA, go to your local RIA meeting and mentor a young hungry kid that wants to get into this. I can tell you, it'll add a richness to your life that you can't get anywhere else. And, you know, and, and you, remember mindset is everything, you know, and in, in, in my podcast, I do these little five minute clips called your driving force success tips, all about the psychology of success. So, you know, if you want to, if you want to get a little juice, you know, I'd love it if you come listen to mine, but, but. The, the remember mindset is everything and if you're not happy and you're not fulfilled you're not going to achieve you know so many people achieve to be happy why not happily achieve yeah i love right? it i love yeah. it and, and 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 so so yeah uh, just remember that make sure you've got your goals 
Um, I mean, we could talk real estate. We could do another segment sometime about real estate. I've, yeah, you know, you know what? I just want to expand on one more thing you had mentioned there. You said, yeah. you know, if you're buying single family homes and, you're, and you've kind of mastered that, you're looking to do other things and you, you want to give back, then you know, go take someone underneath your wing. I mean, it's funny, Rod, I know that you probably get the same question often. I, I, I've been getting it for years now with the podcast. It's like, you know, some of the things that you go into in your podcast, Kevin, are like very granular. Like you're giving away your secrets. Like you're giving away the things that are working in your business. Why are you telling them to people? Because they're going to be your competition. And I don't see it that way way at all. I mean, I see as though like I had many people like yourself, Rod, that helped me get into this business. I mean, I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for you and it wasn't for the many others that have, you know, guided me and hold, you know, held my hand walking down that path together to get me where I'm at today. And so it pays you back tenfold. It really does. Never hold things close to the vest. Help someone else out. Help someone else buy their first home, buy their first apartment building, buy their first mobile home park. That could, that could be the way that you give back. Maybe that's what right. you do, you know, and it's very right, easy. Right, You've got right. the knowledge. Everyone's got knowledge in their brain that they can share that can be, you know, there, helpful to someone else. There are so many ways you can give back. And, and, you know, I, I, I know that most of you are listening to this thing, thinking it was going to be about real estate. And I hope you realize truly the topics that we've discussed is 80% of your success in anything. Um, and and that's 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 this, you know, the the being happy, being fulfilled, giving back, um, and and having the right mindset, you know, knowing why you're doing what you're doing because you need clarity. Uh, by the way, let me ask. I just that just reminded me of something. As you're writing your goals, make sure that they are clear and measurable. Don't say I'm going to lose some weight. You're going to lose exact the number of pounds by X date. Clear and measurable goal. Sorry, I forgot to add that. No. But, but anyway. Um, well, I, I definitely I think it would do a disservice to everyone if we actually did end this show without talking a little bit about real estate. Now, I know, Rod, you've been working on a, a phenomenal multifamily coaching and training program. You're also offering some um, you know, personal development coaching as well. And uh, I mean, you, you just I think just based on this this interview that we've just done here, people can see the value that you could bring to someone's life. And so, oh, thank maybe, you, buddy. maybe I maybe speak that. a little bit to. Um, um, to, you know, to the services that you offer, to the different well, uh, um, you know, yeah, coaching you know, programs and such. And uh, we don't have to dive too deep, but just I want people no. to know what you offer as an individual. You've got a phenomenal podcast. I mean, guy, you. you're kicking my butt now, I think. What's going on? I think, I, I, you know, you know, it was a competition <laughs> for a while. We hit we hit 1.2 million downloads, which is, which is pretty exciting and, and to do that in a year. But you know, I think the reason it's been so well received, guys, and 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 check it out. It's called Lifetime Cash Flow Podcast. I think the reason it's, it's been so well received is because I incorporate those every week. I do just five minutes about something success, psychology of success related. You know, goals, wise, taking total responsibility, how to deal with adversity, how to push through fear. You know, how to. Um, uh, how to communicate effectively or why it's so important, mm-hmm. the, the the value of appreciation, on and on and on. So check it out. I think, you know, I think uh, it'll definitely add value to you guys uh, because it's, it, and then the real estate piece may as well. It's it's similar to what Kevin does, except, you know, my topic is primarily apartments. Uh, but yeah, so I, yeah, of course, I've got a course and I've got an incredible coaching program. I'm not going to get into that. If you're interested, you can go to rodcleef.com and, and check it out. And I'd love to, love to hear from you. Uh, if you if you like what you hear on the podcast, but but you know my life is about giving back, and that's where I get my greatest joy. And you know it's funny, I I I got into the podcast for one reason, and I started taking phone calls from my listeners, like I know you do, Kevin, and I've had hundreds of them, and they've given me the greatest joy in the world, which is why I I finally I, ne- I never intended to do a course or coaching or any of that stuff, but I've just gotten so much pleasure out of it, like I get from you know the Tiny Hands Foundation out of that, helping others. That, I mean, you know, it's, helping, that's, that's the what bottom, it comes that's the down to, line. helping guys, others. So I, hope, I hope you guys get the message here because life truly is about giving back. Anything in this universe that doesn't contribute, believe it or not, gets gets eliminated. So it, humans are no different. You have to contribute to feel fulfilled and happy. And that can mean any number of things. It can, you know, even if you just go to an old folks home and ask them if they've got somebody that never gets visitors and just go talk to that person. You know, and and and, yep. and there's so many things you can do to give back that don't cost money. I guess is my point. Rod, um, it's actually one of the requirements we have for our students in our mobile home park academy is that I mean, there's other requirements. This is the big one: is that you, you can't be in the academy if once you learn this business and you find success and you, and you master these skill sets. You've got to be willing to pass this on to somebody else. If someone oh, else comes it. to you and they they want to learn this business, they have questions about this business. 
you share it with them. You share all the knowledge that you've gained. You have to. Otherwise, you're not a good fit for our program. You've got to be willing to give back. You can't hold it it close to the vest. You've got to be open and transparent with everything that you do. And uh, so that's one of the requirements. Let me just say something. Let me just say something uh, back to you, Kevin, because I know know, you've got a lot of people listening here. And that is, guys – if you're interested in that mobile home park business, I've seen Kevin's course, and it is, you know, you heard me say about his integrity. You already know that if you listen to him, but I'm telling you, it is killer, killer. I mean, it's 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 everything you could ever possibly want to know if you're truly serious about success in this business. So I highly recommend you get it if you're even thinking about it. But uh, Anyway, hopefully well, I've added a little value. No, today. it's been absolutely incredible, right? I, again, this was way overdue. And before we before we say goodbye to one another, I, I just want to ask you one last final thing here. And, uh, you know, I got this golden nugget segment at the end of the show. So I'm going to throw this out. And I want you to apply whatever your answer is. And it, obviously, there's no right or wrong answer here. But I want you to apply this to the psychology behind success of what we've talked about, you know, this entire interview here today. And, you know, what one final golden nugget of advice or wisdom would you leave with the listeners that are tuning in today that may inspire and motivate them as they progress in whatever facet of their real estate investing career it is, but as they progress in their real estate investing career, what would that one last golden nugget be? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell them, I'm going to tell you guys that I know there are a lot of you listening that haven't taken action yet. And for whatever reason, fear, uh, the achiever's word for fear is stress, <laughs> or just whatever, you haven't taken action. Maybe you're very analytical and you're caught up in analysis paralysis. Do everything you can to focus on your mindset, to get your to get your head right, to take action because you're going to regret it. There's no time like the present. There are deals out there if you're willing to do the work to find them, and the clock doesn't start ticking till you take action. So so you don't get caught up and 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 push through this and just listen for enjoyment. If you're serious about changing your life, you've got to take action. Mm-hmm. I love it. There's, in fact, there's a there's a quote that's, that's on my board, Rod, by uh, Calvin Coolidge. I'm sure you've heard it before. It's a very, very popular quote, but it's it, 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 not necessarily directly to take action, but I think it's along those same lines. It's nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, has solved and will always solve the problems of the human race. Love it. Love it. And it's so true. I mean, take action. Yep. Love it. Rod, it's been awesome, my friend. I'm so glad that we had the opportunity to do this. Thank you so much for everything you shared today. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Okay. You take care. All right. All right. See you, buddy. Congratulations. Now you've got more of the best tricks of the trade in building massive amounts of passive income from real estate. For more amazing resources, visit realestateinvestingforcashflow.com and we'll see you next Monday morning.